on telly then. God channel. Oh yeah. Do you want me to change it? No, it's alright. There's sometimes some uh, interesting things on here. <sighs> some problems with that. Yeah. Problem with having uh, too many channels though. It's hard to decide uh, what to watch. It keeps going in and out of widescreen all the time as well. Do you want to change it? I don't think it's set up right because you turned it off before. Aye. Uh, super wide or wide? Whichever looks best, I'm not sure what it's set up. That cuts his head off. Yeah, I don't want that. That's alright, isn't it? Yeah, that's fine. Americans have wide heads anyway, then. <laughs> well, he does. So, what about this presentation, then? Next, next week? Um, I don't know. Do you reckon? I don't know. I've got the camera booked, haven't we? Yeah. Sorry. Bye, Matt. Bye, Matt. I, I just can't be bothered. I, I don't really know what it's going towards, you know. Is that yeah. the shop open? Uh, yeah, it should be. Yeah. About 10 minutes. Something like that. What do you reckon we should do for our presentation? I don't know. Do what I'm doing. What are you doing? Nothing. It's a good idea. It's easy. Maybe we should concentrate on the film aspect of things. Yeah. It's probably going to be the easy, easiest way to go. Might take my mini and just say, right, get in car, experience the mini. I'm charging hmm. What film? Well, I mean, or films. Yeah, give, given the results of that questionnaire, most people seem to have seen the films that that epitomise Generation X, really. The likes of The Breakfast Club Ziggy. and uh, Reality oh, Bites. So. Ferris Bueller? Yeah, Ferris Bueller. It's, so, um, I would say that was probably the most popular film out of all the ones. I love that film. Yeah. Oh, no. it's, it's pretty good. I've seen it a lot of myself. But just maybe, you know, get one or two clips and sling them together next week. Yeah. And all those telly. Yeah. And films. Mm. It's hard work though, isn't it? Huh. I don't know if I can be bothered. No, no, there are times. <laughs> I mean, the problem is, I know this is what we set out to do, like what is Generation X, but what is Generation X? Because I don't know. <laughs> no, I mean, we've, we've seen so many different definitions but none of them are particularly like the defining one are they? No. Well there's the book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I suppose that's that's perhaps where the term came from. They just sit around talking. Yeah. It just doesn't happen in real life, does it? Well, no, it's just totally unrealistic. They don't do anything, do they? They just sit around and discuss things and don't really get anything done. I mean you, you know, you can't live like that. Obviously, they, well, it's only fiction, isn't it? Obviously. Yeah, it's, it is fiction. But well, I mean, does Generation exist anyway? What, what do you class Generation X as? <laughs> Tough one. Mm, yeah. In some ways, it's just a loose sociological term with negative connotations. I think that's the best definition, actually. Yeah. I mean, having looked at things like dates of birth, people born between 1961 and 81. Yeah. Doesn't really seem to apply. It's more about a, like a, a shared media experience. Yeah. Or shared media experiences. You know, if you've seen certain films and read certain books and experienced certain things in your own life, then you can consider yourself to be part of a generation. Whereas if you've never seen the likes of Ferris Bueller or any of those films. I mean, that was certainly evident from the responses in the questionnaire, the people who had seen most films on the list had plenty to say, and the people who had seen nothing just left boxes blank. Or I think that's true in life anyway. The more you see, the more you do. Yeah. The more opinions you're, you're true. going to have. Well, in that case, Generation X should have a lot of opinions because they've seen so many films and so much media exposure. Yeah, and sort of television is the babysitter, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the one thing that separates us from 
the previous generation is the exposure to media. Yeah, we've just been born with the with the technology already yeah. around us. It's an instant. And that, that's how you find out that the generation is the generation because it's severing links from the other generation as well. Yeah, so it's about the boundary. Yeah, one of the main ones is definitely TV and films. Mm. Because that reflects society as a whole, doesn't it? Certainly. I mean, what's the older generation? <laughs> Parents and so on. Yeah, I, I suppose people who, who've had that job for life and that that sort of life plan where they just, you know, they decide on a job on a, like, a, a, essentially a career path and just follow it and retire. And, yeah, and that's, it, where that's not going to happen for us, is it, I don't think. No, because, I mean, even within sort of design and stuff, a lot of people have three simultaneous jobs. Mm. I would say three simultaneous careers, but simultaneous jobs. Definitely. Yeah, there's, it's, there's a lot more broad-based employment, yeah. isn't there, and flexi time, etc. I think it's probably postmodern slippage. Quite one possibly, area yeah. to another, yeah. yeah. I mean, that is one thing of our generation. We are more postmodern, ironic, as you could say. Yeah. We have to be though, don't we? I suppose irony is used, especially by young people, to almost make ludicrous situations palatable in a way. Yeah, there's a lot of ludicrous situations about Well. It. I could certainly say that. Alright. Alright. Alright, Zig. How you doing? Yeah, yeah, not bad. Just thinking about our presentation for next week. Still struggling? Mm. Uh, I just can't be bothered, you know what I mean? Oh, uh, yeah. It's just a case of getting around to it. It's, it's finding the like format as well. Finding motivation. Yeah. There's so many formats mm. to do, but none of them reflect Generation X. Mm. How, how do you have a format that reflects someone who doesn't even want to be bothered making a format? Yeah. It's impossible, it's isn't it? It's a difficult subject. Yeah, no, that's a problem. I thought it would be really easy, but... Well, not easy, but... It's interesting. Thought, yeah, it's interesting, but it's too... ambiguous. Because, mm. I mean, I can't even decide if I'm in Generation X, if it does exist. The problem is it just needs researching more. Mm. Well, questionnaires. I, I'd say, yeah, I mean... We've collated enough research now, it's just uh, put it together. It's yeah. Just I think that the worst thing is, because of our course, we know about media and marketing and things, and the ultimate fact is that Generation X is used as a tool for marketing. Yeah, a, a target audience in a way. And mm. there's one thing I'm not going to be buying, and that's a mega memory home study course. That's right, it's 39 And that guy <laughs> must be on that 24 hours a day. Shop America, yeah. Speaking of shops, we're just going to take one. Right, okay. Should be. 20 minutes, yeah. Do you consider yourself to have sold out? <laughs> well, I don't know. Um, I, th I think selling out implies that you had morals before you sold out. And yeah. Well, I've never had morals, so... Well, I have, but not exactly... Not to the same extent as your parents. No. I mean, do you often find the older generation are almost embarrassed by their compromised values? Well, I think... Um, if, if indeed they are aware of them, I mean, it often needs to be pointed out, doesn't it, that they've compromised their values? I think fate, fate's a bugger, because... Their values corresponded with the post-industrial world, and I don't know. I can live up to that sort of life. No, I don't. I don't think. Essentially, it's you're going to end up with a job. Essentially, you're going to end up with a job in the service sector, tertiary industries. So yeah. it's going to be some somewhere along the line. It's going to be tied up with capitalism and commercialisation. So. They're all going to cut their ponytails off and huh. come on with the money. Yeah. Which isn't a bad thing, but it just serves them right for having principles in the first place, I suppose. You've got to be adaptable, haven't you? Oh, absolutely, yeah. You've got to be pragmatic.
before the end of short preview. Yes, you've only just got over half an hour, so you need to get dialing if you want any of these items. I'm not letting this go. I'm not. Let me give the details again for the items we've looked at in the first part of tonight's shop preview. Okay, Dragon Naturally Speaking Volume 4. Remember, that is the hands-free system so that you dictate to your computer. 1618080, is the preview price, saving £4 on tomorrow's price in the entertainment shop. Who wants to be a millionaire? The game of the TV show, 1618383. Tomorrow's price, 26.99, but the preview price, if you call now, is just £26.99. And if you loved walking with dinosaurs on the TV, why not enjoy the game at home with children? Well, it's more like an educational toy, really. 1618, 129, yeah, that'll do. Battery's ring low. Okay. Oh, well, we've got about halfway, but... Fucking hell! Nice I mean, if the likes of Lenore and that, I'll watch it. They're not going to want to have a spare. Yeah. So I'll just do a cunt shot halfway through. Yeah, I think so. Just do something weird, like we'll swap place on the sofa or something. That's <laughs> just... What else can you do? Well, put on, put on different clothes and pretend it's a different day. <laughs> For us. Oh, you know, like, we're not going to have a job for life, are we? Is this presentation going to make or break us? No, it'll be forgotten in a couple of weeks. I'll be surprised if we get marked. It's all about personality, isn't it? Yeah. Like, if I work. If your work's good and you have a crap personality, then they won't employ you. But if you have a good personality and your work's crap, they will. So what's the point in working? But then, you, you have to realise that you have a good personality, and then that's entirely subjective anyway. I'd say I've got a good personality, but most people would disagree. Who's so, not a, a slacker though? No. You know. Yeah, well, at least you're not a layabout. Well, it's not difficult to motivate yourself, is it? No. It's all about having a bit of spirit. Especially when a bit you of pay get up fees. And, a bit of get up and go. You can accomplish anything. And we, we pay fees for education. That's like a big Thursday. So you sort of have to do well, don't you? Yeah. Well, there's, there's motivation there in itself. I mean, you're paying a thousand quid. May as well make the most of it. Parents don't pay anything. No, no. Was, when when was it introduced to us? Was it 1997? When we started, basically, as our yeah, before us was like as our age was coming to university age, they brought that in. Evil. Yeah. Oh. Thought you'd be giving up smoking, isn't it? Yeah. I have. This is like a, a nic nicotine patch. You'll be unpopular with your NHS then. Yeah, I know. You'll be out of pocket. Tax. And if you're still buying with dark smoke and then yeah. paying for the NHS. And get a, a big fuel guzzling car and leave the engine running overnight. But it is patriotic, isn't it? Oh, yeah, definitely. It's putting money into the economy. I think how much goes from that. How tax it put how cheap is it in France? I'm not sure, I've never been to France. Well, I went on for a booze cruise. Yeah. And we pretty much loaded up. How much were these? Four quid <coughs> for six. Or was it four quid for eight? I'm not sure. Four quid for 24 in France. Small bottles, 250 millilitres. Four, four quid conservative estimate. Yeah. That's for like a fisher, which is about 4.2%, 4 I think. 
was talking to a guy the other week who had a big off-roader. He could fill his off-roader up where he lived on Cyprus for eight quid, and it cost him 60 plus in this country. Yeah. I mean, that, you know, that's a difference, like 52. Petrol in America is crazy. Petrol in the States. Mm. The problem with our generation is it's not our generation at all. The only problem is that we've inherited all the baggage from the generation above us. Mm. I mean, when they started kicking in, that was after the war, everything was hunky dory, tickety boo. But what we ended up with, like, just world crises everywhere. Born into the Cold War, massive third world problems, famine. That was the thing with that our uh, questionnaire. The number of people who said that we were the generation that had grown up without war. Yeah. And what, since 1981, how many wars can you name? Uh, <laughs> Just off the top of your head. Falklands War, Gulf War, Balkans, Balkans. There was the war when um, Soviet Union broke up against Lithuania, Latvia. There was Rwanda, genocide, all that. Yeah, the collapse of uh, Yugoslavia. East Timor. It's not like massive wars, but still. There's one going on now. Technically, isn't yeah, Palestine. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Israel, I Iraq, Iran war. I mean, we're not directly Six affected, war. but it's still war, isn't it? It's not like. Let's mention the Cold War. Yeah. Mm. James Bond and all that. The Cold War. <laughs> the inflation war. <laughs> Maybe your country's the place to go, Iceland. No, you get ripped off. Seem to be right over there. <laughs> Is that cradle to grave welfare? Yeah, it's a uh, big monopoly. Mm. Loads of companies, but basically it's just one. Yeah. But well, that's happening all over the place. It's just, it's more obvious in Iceland because it's such a small place. Yeah. Basically, we've been taken over by McDonald's and Coca Cola all over the world. You can see it too, yeah. can I'd rather be a communist because then at least you know you've been exploited. Capitalism. We're all, all lapdogs, it's just communists now who's stroking their back. 